Legacy 2010, the fifth generation of Subaru Legacy with the first generation of boxer diesel engine. The four horizontally opposed cylinders, together 147 horsepower. A very dynamic and, how to say, economical engine. It's the best um, power and economy ratio. I believe 6 liters per 100 kilometers on highway if driven below 110 kilometers per hour or in city it's around 7 liters per 100 so it's a it's a very decent engine one of the child diseases I would like to mention is the DPF filter which gets full uh, a little bit ahead of a time and uh, there is a dependency that the, as you know the Subaru turbo is powered by exhaust gases so uh, in case the DPF filter gets full, uh, turbo suffers, and in my case, turbo died. So in case you have a DPF sign, uh, a little yellow filter sign coming up on the panel, uh, please pay immediate attention to this, because if you don't, then your uh, turbo can die. What, it, what also can happen is that your engine can die. This uh, first generation of Subaru Boxer diesel has a problem with the crankshaft. Uh, mine got broken uh, on our way to France in holiday. So the thing is that the, the DPF um, is a very expensive thing. It, it, the, the whole module costs around 2,000 euros. So people are trying to find alternative ways how to get rid of this problem and one of the uh, one of the solutions is just to remove the DPF. Okay, that's fine, and the car can be programmed, reprogrammed. Uh, it's all fine. But uh, what, what what people need to be aware of is that there is a second filter in the same module. It's called a catalytic converter, and that also has to be checked. In my case, it wasn't checked, and the catalytic converter was full. It didn't pass through the exhaust gases, so the exhaust gases were hitting back to the engine and killed the killed it basically and the crankshaft uh, looked like this in the case your crankshaft gets broken you can um, either dump the car or you can uh, buy a new engine block the base block uh, how to say with uh, the cylinders and the crankshaft part so you put together the existing heads so this is a, a, a flat engine with horizontally opposed cylinders so it has two heads engine heads on either side so the cylinders move like this not like this so um, um, it is uh, in our case it was around five thousand euros um, to replace the engine base it's a hugely expensive thing so just in case your um, DPF sign comes up please pay immediate attention to that and ideally replace the whole unit if you don't then just check that the uh, catalytic converter is, 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 is passing through ex exhaust gases and it's not blocked what what other downsides I found uh, in this car having driven it for two and a half years is the suspension is a little bit too soft if you have two people in the back with just a little bit of a luggage you will notice that the car is um, is, 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 is low and you, if you're driving it on a, on a uneven roads uh, bad roads conditions sometimes the suspension just will get through so you will you will, you will uh, feel um, unpleasant bumps so it, it's it's I wish uh, that this suspension was a little bit uh, stronger it's a very well packed car it has a navigation system it has a rear camera it has um, air conditioning, climate control, it has uh, uh, heated leather seats, it has electric windows, it has a sunroof, uh, it has um, uh, it has a hill descent control system, it has uh, electric parking, uh, stability control, adjustable steer, uh, steering wheel, um, it has very um, ergonomic knobs uh, the, for controlling your mobile. Uh, if you pair it through this um, by Bluetooth. Regarding the suspension, we are now passing a cobblestone road and um, there is a little bit of a noise coming through from, from the suspension. So, in that sense, it's not ice, the sound isolation is not that great when it comes to. You can feel maybe there is some sound coming through. You wouldn't get that sound from um, Audi. Very good value for money. It's a 
very practical car. It's a car that represents your lifestyle and this is what I like about Subaru that they are making cars which um, they are not just filling the segments of um, of models. If you look at the um, model spectrum of for instance the Audi or BMW that you see that the uh, the model spectrum is gets too saturated um, saturated in, in terms of there are now A1, A2, A3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 when it comes to Audi and BMW is now trying to make uh, cars like 4 series which is which is something I, I don't understand so Subaru is not following that they have their own path and th this path is very clear they have XV a small car very capable uh, they have uh, Forester uh, which is also the high clearance car with 22 centimeter ground clearance they have the Outback their biggest car with 20 centimeter ground clearance all of them have the uh, symmetrical all-wheel drive including this one legacy so uh, it's uh, the off-road capabilities of this car is limited to the ground clearance unfortunately but it still is capable of passing through uh, for instance a 15 centimeter powder snow for instance so it's um, it is a very uh, practical very uh, the, the usage of this car is very wide um, you can drive it in the city, you can drive it in the countryside so if you don't have a muddy roads or bad roads uh, you really would love this car uh, the sound quality is is excellent as I said the consumption of this car is um, six in highway seven in the city but uh, to get to that number you really have to measure it yourself you can't really trust the the uh, the computer because uh, it shows one liter less approximately one liter less um, the good thing about the diesel is that um, the consumption is not that dependent on the driving style so you can actually drive the, the car in a, in a very aggressive mode and you, you would still, you wouldn't, uh, the, the, the diesel consumption would not jump up as it would in, in the petrol cars, for instance. So, um, this is a manual, of course, a six gear manual. Um, and if you're driving uh, at 120 kilometers, then your RPM would be below three. So, it's, um, yeah, it's, um, it's a fifth generation Subaru Legacy. Uh, it has um, it's it's marking a design change of Subaru. It, this is the first model without the frameless uh, doors, sort of uh, a loved design element of Subaru owners. When it comes to Subaru owners, then we have to mention the fact that Subaru is has one of the highest um, customer loyalty scores. So people who have Subarus. Um, tend to choose Subaru as their next car having owned one so um, I think despite the fact that I have my engine broken I um, I would I'm quite inclined to think that my next car would be Subaru as well uh, and when it comes to servicing we have to mention the service interval of Subaru and the oil change service interval is 10,000 um, kilometers why so short it's the, due to the fact that uh, Subaru turbo is cooled by engine oil so it has to be comparatively fresh and clean because uh, as you can as you know the turbo is is uh, quite a sensitive sensitive part in the engine it's a very crucial part so it compresses the incoming air and it's powered by the exhaust gas is cooled by the um, engine oil so um, you really have to pay much attention to that it makes you feel good if you service your car in frequent intervals the leather seats of course sometimes get cold in, in cold winter so um, until you get them heated uh, you 
you can feel some cold through the dress. When it comes to petrol consumption, I have to mention the fact that we, I previously had Toyota Avensis, uh, the front-wheel drive car, uh, with uh, the same size engine, two-liter diesel, and the consumption was actually the same. It was half a liter less, but given the fact that this is an all-wheel drive, at all times all wheels are driving, so uh, and the power is uh, distributed equally to all wheels in winter time when there is some, a little bit of a black ice you feel very safe the, the car is sort of um, attached to the road and you, you don't have to worry about too much of course you have a, a button here to deactivate the stability control but if you do then you have to know what you're doing and by the way um, some guys might enjoy the, the, the type of driving that the BMW provides. If you uh, accelerate on a slippery road and turn your, your wheel, your back will go sideways. You can actually feel a little bit of this in this car as well because the rear uh, wheels are actually driving so this, if, if, you, if you're pressing the acceleration pedal sufficiently you will see that you will feel that the the rear wheels are actually losing uh, losing traction, and this is this is a fun moment of, of this car as well. So there is it's not all about safety always. You can you can do a little bit of um, a fun drive as well. Of course you don't have a handbrake, but you really don't need one because this is not a front wheel drive. So you can actually get your back a little bit sideways by just accelerating sufficiently. I hope you enjoyed this video. It, it was not to criticize Subaru, it was just to highlight the moment of um, DPF and crankshaft issue when it comes to first generation of Subaru diesel engine from 2008 to 2010. Thanks for watching.